Good morning, Westeros. And welcome to our Morning Throners podcast. I'm Nelson. I'm Jeff. And I'm Kyle. And we're the fucking Morning Throners. And welcome back to another episode of your favorite Song of Ice and Fire podcast. We are your Morning Throners, and we got Danny 2 on deck. Gentlemen, good to see you. Long time no see. I forgot to grab a cup. Give me one second. Oh, no. All right, I'll give the ten, the, the quick synopsis of this chapter. Yeah, let's hear it. Pretty much Danny is checking out the Unsullied. That's it. She's got the ask for. <laughs> she's checking out the Unsullied. She's conflicted about it, and she's trying to figure out whether she's going to buy him or not. That is basically it for a, what, 19 pages, 21-page <laughs> chapter? Kyle, what are your thoughts? Uh, it was another another uh, wordy chapter here. <laughs> so, I mean, we kind of were touching a little bit. We didn't get too deep into it, but like, I feel like the first half of our discussion here could probably be shorter than they do it in the book. For sure. Even just for the sake of like not having to filter it through a third person, right? Like that's kind of like the whole gimmick of that. Exactly. Yeah. You guys, sure. you guys were saying before we recorded that it's kind of like a long chapter. I agree. I wasn't saying I wasn't saying anything, saving it for the record button. But exactly what Kyle said. I think it's longer than it needs to be because everything that is said is pretty much said, said twice. Twice. Not everything. Yeah. A lot of times it's just like well, it was it translated, really, but a is. lot of it is. Yeah. Which was kind of a weird kind of gimmick, right? So like, there's definitely parts of that that like they answer each other, but at the same time, it's also implied that it's going through the girl exactly. still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, so it's, it's, implied it's just like the whole a strange time. thing. It's like. They still understand each other, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think yeah. it's a really tool, cool, cu- uh, really tool, cool, really cool tool because obviously we know Danny knows what he's saying, so like yeah. we get like the like she's like, well, uh, yeah, she's definitely playing him, right? This is her. Yeah, he's got stuff up his sleeve. I'm sure this is her thing up her sleeve. Well, there's even a few times where when she when he says something like really horrible, she even says like I had to look away because I knew that like if, his he, if he saw my face, yeah. he'd be able to he'd be able to tell that her I knew reaction. what he was saying. Yeah, there was the and then the other aspect of the ten year old slave girl kind of like filtering what he's saying. Like she's <laughs> yeah. had to do this before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's definitely softening it or softening it, and yeah. I think that's kind of. The point, like he he knows that she is. Yeah. Also, now that we're in like we, I guess we kind of had this a little bit in Karth, but back we're in like foreign cities. We got more crazy names. So this guy she's talking to, his name is. He does have a crazy ass name, Krasnus Monaklos. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. That's, that's Fuck what I was yeah, man, say. that was better than anything <laughs> I could come up. Krasnus Monaklos. Yeah, that's thing is good. So yeah, I I in my notes I was just kept writing them down as Kras. So if you hear me. They never yeah, refer to him as Kras. Let's go. You, I'm going to go by Kras. <laughs> if you, yeah. So in the podcast, if you hear us say Kras, yeah. All right, let's set up. Oh, uh, there's a little bit of a of a law. I feel like George. I thought it was Krasins. I thought he was really into <laughs> yeah cranberry raisins. <laughs> his name's Kra- His parents love Krasins. I feel like George thought he had to kind of write this chapter a little bit longer because we don't see Danny that much. What, you mean the chat? Her chapters are longer and, and just spread yeah, out. Yeah, definitely. They definitely are a little beefier. You're right. Yeah, that's fair. And so, like, he's world building, Danny building. Like, she's always got, like, oh, what happened to me the last month in her yeah. kind of chapter. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely covers a, a larger <clears throat> span of time, typically, her chapters. Yeah. I, the worst part about the world building over here, though, is, like, we don't – I don't give a shit about most of these places still, right? Like, I, why should you? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's definitely one of those things where there's not, like, a – a reason to get as invested there's not a vested interest yeah exactly yeah like it's because especially because like even danny doesn't plan on like staying here long like, yeah it's she's just, like, her whole it's, plan it's, is to come west <laughs> so like why do i care I, I agree with you but for the most part i'm not huge i'm not one of the guys who like there are people in the fandom who get geeked up about places that like we get one line about like and I, and some of like the tv shows they're gonna make are about pretending like, like he's not one of those guys I get geeked up about a lot of stuff. I'm not yeah, one, I'm not of, the one of those guys, guys with his own podcast that's been running for multiple Listen, years. Listen, I'm saying like there's literally like a place called YT that's mentioned maybe five times. It's just like a kind of a far east place. And they're going to make like an anime about it. And I'm like, what? What are you going to like? There's no content like. Well, so here's the thing, right? So you have that like, oh, they're tall people with like round faces that live there. Like that's literally what we get. You know what I mean? Like there's no content, but there's that means there's also endless content, right? Well, kind of, but it seems like so far it seems like that they've been a bunch of um, we're off on a tangent, right? There've been a bunch of shows proposed uh, and pretty much everything's getting shut down except for the stuff that has actual writing behind it. 
So, okay. like, the House of the Dragons was based off Fire and Blood. Game of Thrones was based off Song of Ice and Fire. And I think they're learning that because the Game of Thrones TV show kind of shit the bed once they ran out of books to go off of. They're like, you know what? Let's not just make shit that doesn't have a book to back it anymore. Let's 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 rely on. I think at the same writing. time, though, I think if there's no like if it's just like a one word mention, I think then you're kind of free from that trap of like having to stay true to anything as well. So I, I don't know. I, you're right. We're tangent. So you're 100 percent right. And they are exploring those. I just think it's interesting. If people have pointed out in the fandom that the only ones so far that have got greenlit are the actual three that have books written about them, like Duncan Egg, Game of Thrones and Fire. And Where's Blood. Duncan Egg? You that already just know got announced that, you that they're going to make a, a, a fan fi- base. But it won't be there for like three years. They just announced no. it. Go ahead, Jeff. You already know that you have the fan base for those three exactly. things. Exactly, so, yeah. Like if people like have Star already Wars. bought those books, you're like, well, at least these 18 million will Profitable. watch it or whatever. <laughs> you know, like, exactly, yeah. Versus yeah. something like, oh, Yee-T? Like, what the fuck is that? Like, that's kind of like Andor a little bit. Like, someone could be like, oh, I don't give a shit about it like maybe they never saw rogue one type of thing i was gonna say the problem with using andor is that's like that's like one of the most well-received parts of that sure i'm stuff. just saying it's a little bit disconnected from yeah. maybe the, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 i know so. what you're saying it, it definitely didn't have the same appeal going into it but yeah it, like i'm sure it I'm can be like done it well I finally... and i think an- your andor point proves the point is is where we're at so let's let's go on it although right, so I, there's probably standing... andor source material there's a fucking million star wars books yeah, yeah. anyway well I, I just want to go back to kyle's point kyle's point was like i don't get invested in these areas and i agree uh, i'm not the whole point there was i'm not one of the guys who's excited about this like anime they're going to make about a show about a place we've heard of three times but like i do kind of like like this place because there's like a contrast of how horrible it is and then at the end it does seem like it like it would be a pretty cool like you know what i mean like spend a weekend in Astapor and like see the pe- like the huge pier- like they said the pyramid's 400 feet high the, the tallest pyramid in in uh Giza is 455 feet high. So it's like, it's a big-ass pyramid, pretty much what they got it I'm out I'm glad you just knew that. That's awesome, man. He Googled it. I looked it up. Uh, I know. Yeah, uh, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's set it up. All right, yeah, we're in the, the Plaza of Pride in Astor. Danny's looking at this big-ass bronze harpy. So we get a little bit of history of where we're actually at, which is now called Astor, but was Old Geese. So it's not actually Old Geese. So I'll pull the map up real quick. Okay. If you look at the map... The, on this one, I drew a line from where Danny's coming from. Old Geese is under Geese Car there. Exactly. It's right there next to the red line. Mm. That's where Old Geese is. So so essentially what she's she, – her her knowledge of the harpies is Old Geese, right? And then she's like, they had a different harpy though. Their harpy had a lightning bolt. Yep. Yeah, exactly. This one has chains. Yep. So and it's we, like the same people but different, I think, right? That's kind of the point. Like this is an old – Yep. And just to put this this map in place of like the world – this is like the known world, and this map here is like this bottom right part. Okay, right. I see so has to pour, yeah. we're, we're far from Westeros, and I just pull this one up here because they do mention like the Gis history a little bit, and pretty much what happened was Gis got fucked up by the Valyrians and the dragons, mm-hmm. and then Jorah says later on like the Valyrians are gone because of the Doom. Um, again, we've heard this a few times before, but this like black destroyed area is where. Valyria That's was. This doom, is where right? the Valyrians were from, and then some shit happened. We don't even really know what. They just call it the Doom, and now they're gone, and this is what it looks like. But yeah, it pretty much makes sense. We knew where Old Gis was. It's on this map, too. Basically, whenever Valyria became powerful, they just shit on everyone nearby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, well, yeah, they got dragons. Like, yeah. why not? And now war. that the Valyrians are gone, it seems like Astapor and Yunkai and Marine and these other cities, New Gis is down there, are like kind of gaining power back. But they're doing it in an awful way, right? And that's pretty much what this chapter's about. It's like these people are still like super old culture, not – I don't know. I, I hesitate to like talk too much shit on them because I don't want to use words that probably are offensive to some culture that still exists. But you know what I'm saying, right? Like slavery is not – that's like the lowest of the low, right? Does this make you think of any any things from history? There's a few things that I think of like when I read this chapter from like actual historical cultures. Anything for you, Jeff? Mm, no, I'm not. I'm drawing a blank. I have no clue. What you're Even thinking. the Unsullied? What about just the Unsullied? Um, I get like Spartan vibes. They're like lockstep warriors. Yeah, okay. We even talked about it last time with like the Cohor. They had the right. The whole reason that they're here is because Jorah sold Danny on the Unsullied. Like, hey, there was this huge Dothraki army, like forty thousand, even a hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. And they had these that. like the three thousand of Cohor, and they just bash themselves and they basically just like eventually all the Dothraki cut off their braid and now Kohor is completely defended by un, uh, Unsullied who hold like spears with the Dothraki braid tied around it. Yeah. I mean I, I guess like just like the training aspect of like what 
Spartans had to go like through. Like, you start when you're a boy. Like they, yeah, Spartans didn't get, like, castrated or anything like that. But, like, it seems like Spartan boys didn't have... <laughs> Again, I don't know a lot about Spartan history, but it's from like the yeah, movies. I mean, it seems I've like seen, it's pretty rigorous. I used to from, do like, like Greek yeah. mythology, but I don't, I've never dived too much into it. But. So that's the other thing I'm thinking there is this is kind of like Romans. Like like we think of Rome as like really awesome, but they're talking about like fighting pits here. That makes me think of Rome because you have like Colosseums. They're wearing tokars, which are like robes, which again, I don't know if that's if that's actual realistic or that's, if I'm just thinking like gladiator. <laughs> you know what I mean? You but play like, too much Assassin's <laughs> Creed or something. Like Her- Hercules. But like, again, I just kind of get like a Rome vibe here, too, just because the fight, mainly the fighting pits and like this. Again, I think Rome had a lot of slavery, too. I mean, most yeah, cultures I mean, most, did. Yeah, unfortunately. Everything yeah. before recent recent time, you know, yeah, mostly everywhere had it. I mean, whoever you conquered, basically. So I don't. But yeah, and George is a huge history buff, so I bet you he's like pulling pieces from everywhere and just kind of mixing them up into his own yeah. thing. I mean, you got to have a re- reference for something, exactly. right? Like, yeah. yeah, it's a Grateful Dead song, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> has to pour. <clears throat> All right, so we meet our boy Kraz. He's the main slaver, or at least the slaver of the Unsullied, the trainer owner. He's definitely the one that's about to sell him. He's he's yeah. the salesman, the, the car salesman on the floor that day, at the very least, right? Yep. Yeah. And as we mentioned, he's speaking High Valyrian to a 10-year-old girl who's translating the common tongue for him. We know Danny knows High Valyrian. Which is weird, right? Like, he knows who she is. She even gets into, like, the don't forget that I'm the, the queen of dragons. Like, he knows she's Yeah. I think Targaryen. that was, like, his one clue. Like, hey, dumbass. Like, it's a good point. I probably know what you're... I've been knowing what you're saying this whole time. Like, <laughs> stop disrespecting me type... He shit. probably knows most of her history too, though. Like at this point, like he, like he, somebody probably told her, like, "Oh yeah, she was like basically sold to the Dothraki, and then she went to Karth, and now she's here." Like he probably knows some of that. So he's like, "She was never like in a place where you know they speak Valyrian." You yeah, know what true. I mean? So, so why yeah, would she? Yeah, know, but, yeah. Uh, so who's with Danny? She left Jorah back on the boat. Uh, Whitebeard. Artsin and her two blood riders. I would assume at least jo- we know Jogo's there. Yeah, Jogo and Agua, I think she says at the very end, but they don't speak common or Valyrian, so they're just there for guards, right? They they yeah. really they don't do nothing until the end. The yeah. muscle. So basically Danny, the first thing she asks is like, how well were these people trained? And Kras takes like offense to that, like, are you kidding me? Like these were the unsullied. Like everybody knows about these people. They're they're legend. Yeah, these are the yeah. the goats of Their fighters. life is the spear. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And the sword. Yep. And it we know that it's pretty hot here. Like it, Brutally hot, it sounds, and I'm sure the red brick doesn't help, but the heat is just rising up, and these dudes look like statues. Like, the symbolism or the visualization of the Unsullied, pretty dope. Yeah, like, they're naked, too. They have, like, loincloths on, but that's it. They're pretty much just standing there with, like, little loincloths completely naked besides that. And yeah. he's it's, it's one of those things where you got to take everything he says with, like, a grain of salt because, like, he could just be bullshitting Danny, but he says they're, they've been standing here for a day and a half. Right. Yeah, like, yeah, she they, doesn't. They he has complained. no way of proving that for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I think that might be a little far fetched. Yeah, I mean, he goes pretty far, like in ex- in proving some of his claims. But yeah. yeah, I would have liked it if it was three days over a day and a night, because we know. I don't know. We could say this is not true either. He could be be lying. But he said someone was here to look at him three that's days true. ago. Like, oh, someone was here. I just left them out here till you got here. <laughs> yeah, like, look true. how tough they are, type thing. <laughs> yeah, just left true. them out yeah. here. So, uh, but the girl does end up explaining uh, their training. I didn't write the quote. I figured it would be a Nelson quote. They are chosen young for size and speed and strength. They begin their training at five. Every day they train from dawn to dusk until they have mastered the short sword, the shield, and the three spears. The training is most rigorous, your grace. Only one boy in three survives it. This is well known. Among the Unsullied, it is said that on the day they win their spike cap, the worst is done with, for no duty that will ever fall them could be as hard as their training. So again, we read this before we really like get the intricacies of their training, but like... Yeah, by the end of the chapter, this is definitely true. Like, <laughs> they're not strangling puppies and shit, like, in their, like, day-to-day. Sounds awful, yeah. <laughs> so the training's so bad, yeah. Yeah, so I just Googled it really quick. The Spartan, Spartan uh, training is called a gogi, and if you've ever seen 300, you get, like, probably the, a little bit of, and it's probably Hollywood, but they send the little kid off, they get beat, the shit beat out of them, and yep. I'm sure kids die there, too, right? They said, like, sure. one in three are dying here. I'm sure pretty similar to, like, Spartan kids, because... You know, they were just like throwing kids off off cliffs if they looked weird, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. And these are all slaves, too. So, like, what it, it doesn't fight. They're not people. Yeah, so, yeah, cares? of course, like, fucking, yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Who cares if they die? And and to the point of, I don't know. 
I, I'm totally going off the movie 300 here, but Leonidas had to go kill the wolf, right? Wolf, wolf. <laughs> okay, yeah. Like they make this. Dude like there's kill a trial. You're saying dogs yeah. and babies yeah. Yeah. and whatnot. So yep. uh, I'm sure there's there's steps to it. Fun fact: Spartans used to diddle each other to be closer in battle. So yeah, they so, did the opposite. Instead of cutting it all off, they're like, yeah, they, they, they encouraged it. it. Let's get closer. Yeah. All right, so Krasis, again, brags that they've been sitting there for a day and a night without food and water. And like basically, like, these guys will stay here until they die. Like, there's how many there? 900? Uh, a thousand. And a he thousand? says that if he told them to. 999 will die, and the one will still be standing there till he's dead, too. Exactly. <laughs> I think yeah. it was, isn't it 4,000? I think he says there's a thousand here. And then to Jeff's point, he says, yeah, like, basically, if I told them to, if I said, just stand here till you drop. Even after 999 have, stopped, have dropped, the last one wouldn't be like, oh, please, can I go back in? Can I have some food? He would just keep standing there is his point here, which, again, like, it seems, like, unrealistic. But then, like, we hear they're, like, giving them this, like, juice and stuff. I mean, we'll get to it, but, like. They're definitely drugged, right? Yeah, yeah there's something weird going on with these guys. Yeah, and this is where we get kind of the <laughs> disapproval juice. from from Arston then. Uh, yeah, I like how he shows it. He Because, again, we, he knows some, she says he knows some Valyrian, but not as much as her. But definitely enough to like understand what they're saying, and he just little tap 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 on his staff. Every every time he's pissed off, he's just tapping his stick. Tap tap, yeah. Just tell. Yeah, I felt like there was more to that though. Like I I don't know yet, but yeah. To be honest, I don't remember. Yeah, but you could tell it's when it's making he's on it when he's getting uneasy, feeling uneasy, right? And he's pretty straight up about it. Like we're getting the tapping, and then he's like, "This is madness." Yeah, like that's that's crazy, for sure. For sure. And Danny's like, he never wanted to come here anyway, which again makes sense. Because if we think about like where the last Danny chapter left off, the plan was these guys showed up. Yeah, hey, we're going to Illyrio. <laughs> yeah, Bellwas and Whitebeard showed up with like the intention of like, we got you three ships. Illyrio wants to yeah. see you. Let's go. And Jorah mm-hmm. had the plan of like, let's take all this shit <laughs> and let's, let's go. Let's make here. them do some weird shit, run yeah. them around, yeah, and and test their loyalty. Yeah, as part of it. Yeah, so I mean, he's he's rolling with it, but again, he's he's speaking openly about like, yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of this. But, but I mean, and we get it later. She even says it here, like, I want your counsel. Like, yeah. that is the whole point. It's like, she she wants somebody that's not against her, but like yeah. critical of and her. I, and I think it's, a, you know, we find out this is Jorah's idea if we don't know already. Like, Jorah was obviously pro-Unsullied, so she needed yeah. to get somebody that maybe was unbiased or he yeah. might have a or opinion bias the other way. Right. Yeah. So just to hear both sides of the coin. Yeah. It seems like she's pretty good about that with like counsel. Like she yells at him and he's like, Oh, I'm sorry. And he's like, she's like, Oh, I'm sorry. Like, don't let that stop you from giving me counsel in the future. Yeah. As long as you're honest to me. And then even at the end, she's pissed off at Jorah, but she, at the end when she's like on the thing, he comes up behind her and she's like, I'm not going to turn around, but she at least like hears him out. He's like, can I speak frankly? She's like, all right, go ahead. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like a lot of people would be like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I mean, and again, it's kind of weird to be mad at Jorah. For yeah, I think this. she's just kind of pissed off. We'll get like, having a bad day. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that later. But, uh, so Arston and Krasnus go back and forth for a little bit. We find out Jorah was back on the ship protecting the dragons. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we mentioned who's with her. And it, it's really just the difference of like, Arston saying like, this is crazy madness. And he's like, no, this is discipline, obedience type shit like this is why they are the best yep. because of everything we do to them and i i think if you you want to say like white beard's like oh no like just training and and kind of almost like loving your teammate kind of deal like if you'd like your teammate you'll fight harder where this guy's like we're just going to torture them so they can't be tortured anymore well here he's just saying obedience doesn't mean shit like sheep are obedient that doesn't mean they're like good like doesn't yeah. mean doesn't mean anything there uh, and he's like, there, <laughs> this is one of the things where he's like, I'll spill <laughs> the crass is like, I'll spill this stinking man's bowels on the concrete right now. And she's like, should I tell him that? <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if she said that, but she's like, truly, this is where he's like, truly and like, no, I, yeah, I forget when that <laughs> at one up. point she does. I don't know if it's here. Uh, tell the old man he smells of piss and needs a stick to hold him up. That's <laughs> yeah. what she says. Should I really <laughs> tell him that? A word yeah, from, from me and these sheep would spill his stinking old bowels on the bricks. <laughs> yep. But yeah. do not say that. Tell them that these creatures are more dogs than sheep. Do they <laughs> eat dogs or horse in these seven kingdoms? This is weird. Like we just kind of like it's just backwards, right? They eat they eat dogs here. He thinks that eating beef is like barbaric. Yeah. When they say that, like no, they eat beef in the seven kingdoms. She's like, oh, that's crazy. Food for unwashed sav- savages. Yeah. So then, they, then Danny's like walking around looking at the actual like soldiers, and they're kind of like from everywhere. Some look yep. like they're Dothraki. Some are like Lazarine. Some are some look local, like local. <laughs> uh, race i don't know i guess yeah that, like is race 
like old gifs yeah. descents. Yeah. Like you said, some were look like uh Kraz, pretty much. So yeah, they're they're a little bit from everywhere. They're obviously plundered from all these cities though, or sold from, from all these cities. Yeah, it makes sense with like what Jorah says later on too. Like the Dothraki are probably like a big seller of the slaves, right? For these like cities. Jorah says like later, like yeah. the Dothraki don't attack here because this is where they sell. <laughs> this is where they're, yeah. they're making <laughs> Yeah, they're, their they're getting some money. Yeah, true. That I mean, true. it makes sense from knowing what the Dothraki do to they go sack city, steal the people. Like, what are they going to do with all? They got to have somebody fence in your goods, or else, yeah. like, what's right. the point? And at some point, like, I, we know the Dothraki keep enough slaves to like set up their tents and whatnot, and and probably take care of the horses. But at some point, you got to feed everybody. So, yeah, like, I did think it was funny. She was like, "Why don't why don't they have that big ass harpy up by the, the rest of those stolen statues?" <laughs> yeah. like, well, it, it's also interesting. Way back when, whatever Danny chapter it was, early like maybe Danny three or four in Game of Thrones, there's a scene where they actually sack like a Lazarine village. It's where like they get Miri Mas door and Danny yeah, yeah. trying to save all these girls that the are church. being raped. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and in that chapter, maybe it's the next one. Jorah's like. All right, cool. Let's go to Astapor. I don't know if he says Astapor, but he says like one of the like these slaver cities. He's like, okay, yeah. He's immediately like, let's sell the goods. Yeah, they don't. They end up going. I think Vay's Dothraki yeah. instead because uh, Drogo's hurt, or that's when he gets hurt, right? But um, they don't go to the slaver cities. But that's what Jorah thinks they're going to do, or like suggests. So again, just kind of makes sense that the Dothraki are probably where they get a lot of these slaves. Yeah. All right. So we we learn more about the Unsullied being eunuchs now. And this goes back to we've had this conversation multiple times. No, they take the frank or the beans. Yeah, yeah. And mm. most people just take the beans. Yep. And here they take both. That leaves a little bit of temptation still. But so these guys, everything's gone. Got nothing. They're also Kendall. I think she says they're all between like fourteen and twenty. Fourteen um, and twenty. She said they ranged in age from fourteen to twenty. She judged their cheeks were smooth. Blah 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 blah. So, yeah. yeah, it's like surprisingly Confirm. young. Like you'd think you'd at least young. have like some like 25, 26 or it's in there. But yeah, you guys are aged out of it. Yeah. Thank God. Can't get drafted by the Unsullied. <laughs> All right. So Danny's first question, what I think is very valid, is like you cut these five year olds nuts off. Like how are they generating testosterone to become stronger? Like, <laughs> yeah, they're not going to be strong. And, and I think the show did a pretty good job of like typecasting the guys that played on Sully. Like they're all kind none of, of them like, were huge. Yeah, none of like them jacked. were like jacked up dudes. Yeah. You know, even like, I'm not going to say too much, but the, the, the best guy of the Unsully didn't look like a warrior yeah. type of, or even I mean, like a, I think, I think I agree with that aspect, but also I think they didn't do like the good, like mixed race thing. Like the Unsully all look like they were the exact same race in the show. And true. here, like she mentions, the, like there wasn't a mixed stuff rack in. And they mentioned uh, that's because like just in filming locations, it's harder to get like they filmed in like wherever the fuck they were filming. And then it was just harder to get like a mix of, of yeah, different races. Yeah. But so, yeah. all right. But so then we get, we, he explains why, right? <laughs> yeah. Why he doesn't care about strength. And you're right, they won't be as strong, but a bull is strong, and they, they still die to these kids, <laughs> pretty much. like A nine-year-old um, girl killed a bull in the fighting pits the other day. Like These yeah. fighting pits are crazy. It's not just like oh, 1v1s or 5v5s. It's like little kids versus bears or little kids that. versus well, that's bulls. How, like, what the that's fuck? how it was in Rome, too. Like They were fighting tigers and yeah. shit. And- so it's crazy that it's a nine-year-old girl, too, right? Like it's it, This implies that the Unsullied like, like could have girls? No. I'm not sure if it was an unsell if it's important. I, it I mean, unsullied. she's not an unsullied, but like she's just obviously a slave, fighting. A yeah, slave I mean, girl like, that was fighting. She was just a strong slave girl. Okay. Yeah. Or it was just like, hey, yeah. let's throw this little nine year old girl versus a bull and see, <laughs> see what happens. If that attracts any attention. Uh, but so, but but he says like these guys are stronger than that, or they they have more than strength. They're more than that. They have mm-hmm. discipline, which is what you said earlier. They fight yeah. in lockstep. Like they're all like. They're they're so connected to each other. It's like fighting one big giant person, yeah. essentially, right? Like that's his point. And, and this is where he says they anything. have no, f- yeah, no fear. Yeah. Yep. And Arson's like everyone is afraid of death, death or maiming. And then we get a little demonstration on the on the Plaza of Pride. The yeah. first guy comes up, he gets whipped. Danny is like afraid, not afraid of the whip, but a little definitely turned off by the whip, and like every. <laughs> Every she's not loving this, this whole slave situation, yeah, right? She like, that's like really it. the that's the the gist of it. Like she's she's not cool with slaves. She she had her own. She freed them. 
Um, she was she one. Was one. Yeah. yeah, she says that later, and like this is just more of the same. Like she's like, this can't happen, and I can't be in charge of it. Yeah, well, which is kind of, of where I'm getting my theory from later. We'll get to that. Cool. Go ahead. Okay. Um, my my hypothesis. So Danny stops the whipping after one. She doesn't really care, but I guess the dude's not satisfied with the demonstration, so he calls another dude up and cuts his nipple off. <laughs> yeah. He makes like a huge scene of cutting this guy's nipple off too. Like it's like, and the guy just doesn't give a fuck. Like seemingly doesn't give a fuck. He's like, "Thank you, sir. I'm glad to have pleased you." It's like that. Like, "Thank you, sir. Worship. I have another." What's that from? Thank you, sir. I have another. Like all the war movies. War movies right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you make you do some punishment. Thank you, sir. I have another. That's exactly what this is. Like, holy shit. It's boot camp. Yeah. So this is where we learn about the drink that they get yep. and. Is this just like a like a nerve stopping drink? They drink something called the wine of the courage. Is wine of courage is what they say? And they drink it every with every meal from the time they're cut onward, and just over the years they feel less and less. So it's just like yeah, like some sort of like numbing. It's got to numb them, yeah. Deadly nightshade, blood fly larva, black lotus root, and many secret things. Yeah, nasty drink. <clears throat> yeah, so it's like poison essentially. <laughs> like it's yeah, it's fucking them up. Yeah, it's a drug for sure. So it makes them fearless in battle. And this is where I was wondering, like having no pain, like wouldn't be good. Like pain is there for a reason, right? Like if you, if you didn't have pain and you had a stove that was on and you put your hand there by accident, you could just burn your, the fuck out of your hand to the point where you couldn't use it without knowing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's why you wouldn't have pain. pain. So what's stopping you from using your hand? So like, you, like, you I guess like swelling and whatnot, like like you could get hurt to the point where you could get hurt to the point where you could like run away and get healed and then live to fight another day. But if you don't feel pain, you just not realize Like you could take, you could have like five arrows through you and just not even know. You know what I mean? But I think that's the point of having five arrows. I'm going to keep fighting because one, again, these are, these guys are, are weapons basically. Like they're not, they're not viewing these, them as people. It's a, it's it's still an investment. Like. You sure. bought this guy. You don't want him to die. This is why you have so many of them. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think I think they're better fighters than your kind of your example is giving them credit for. No, in no, sense. I, I agree with you guys. I just think it, I think it could be like a bad thing. Like the pain yeah. potentially could be sure. a bad thing. But yeah. So we learn more about their their day to day and just kind of general lives. They have no temptation because well, I guess they're not supposed to because they have no twigs and berries. There's nothing really that they can do, right? Because yeah, you know, unless they they really like being givers maybe that could be a temptation <laughs> yeah and then they have no possessions except for their gear and clothes that they are given the spiked helmet i guess is kind of a big symbol for them oh also because they don't have pain they can't be tortured so like you can have them yeah. be in your council anything. anything yeah yeah, yeah. and then uh they don't have names either they get a, a random name each day picked out of the Picked out of a hat, picked and it's a like hat. a color and a, a vermin. Yeah. <laughs> Flea, rat, yeah, just not yeah. good. Toad, and then there's there's more worm. info on the tri- the trials that they have to go through as well. Yeah, so like I guess they when they get cut, they're given a puppy. This is one of the awful trials, right? Like, yeah, and like if they don't strangle it on the day, they try and get their helmet. Like they they get killed and fed to the dogs, right? Yeah, that's what they and which is interesting because it is horrible, but what what Kraz says is it teaches them a valuable lesson, which I think is that is kind of a valuable lesson to learn. Like if you're gonna be nothing but a warrior, is it's like it's literally a a dog eat dog world. Like you kill it or it's gonna literally eat you. Like it's one or the other. I do see what I see what you're saying. I see the point. It's I mean completely diabolical. Whoever came up with this. And, the, and the other one. Up. Like, it's super horrific. I'm, I'm not saying yes. I agree with it in any mean, in you any way. You are completely saying you agree with no, it. No, I'm not. No, Let's I'm cancel not. Nelson. No, I'm not. It's not <sighs> what I'm saying. I love dogs. You guys know I love dogs more. Anyway, I got a, I got a picture There's, of dog right there. I guess what you're saying is, like, what is what is the lesson behind don't care for anything? Like, you're a you're a weapon of mass destruction. Well, what, I'm, what, I, what I think is interesting is, like, if you don't do kill it, it's going to be the thing that eats you. So, like, I think it's kind of like a... Okay. That's part that, of it. That I think the sense. other side of it, Jeff, though, is, like, you can't... Like, you 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 follow orders no matter what the cost. That's that's true, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the other side. You're Obedience. goddamn right, I did! Yeah. And, I mean, that's really the, the last thing here, too, right? Like, it's like you... So, so yeah, to, the, other, the bad thing that they do is slay a baby. But, but th- that comes at the end of a list of other things. You have to run for a full day, which, again, doesn't seem... Too bad, but still not great. That Climb awful. a mountain at nighttime. 
uh, walk across a bed of coals, and then slay an infant was the last one. And then, yeah, the dog thing after. But yeah, so how does the infant deal work? They just go find a random baby and kill it. From the slave marks. They take a silver coin down to the slave marks, take a, ba- a wailing babe. Danny's like, wait a minute. You'd go down and pay the mother of silver for her pain? And they're like, tell this whore to shut up. It's We don't pay the mother. We pay the, the slaver. We don't let the unsullied steal. Because like yeah. there's like they're stealing a baby is how he sees it. It's so fucked up, dude. This yeah. place is horrible. Yeah, oh yeah, and yeah. she 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 definitely feels. She's like, yeah, way, she so. can't stand it. So there's eight thousand of them available and trained, ready to go. They're also not cheap. He compares them to Valerian steel. Yeah, these people have been forged and bent and forged and bent and forged and bent until they're as strong as as they are as warriors. Yeah, the slavers have put a huge investment in them, so they don't come cheap. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, if these are all 1420, they've spent nine years getting them to this point. Yep, exactly. At least. Um, there's no officers in this on, on the Unsullied. She has to have her own men, yep. They need commanders. She does ask, like, what if somebody would, like, try and, like, steal them away from me by giving them their freedom? And he's like, oh, they would just kill them outright. Like, they, they have no need for it. Like, what would they do with it now? Like, some some slaves, like, try and hoard money so that they could, like, buy their freedom or something. Like, if you, and he's like, if you gave their them gold. Their duty is their duty. If you yeah. gave them gold, they wouldn't even keep it. Like, that, they have no use for it. Yeah. Their sword is the only possession they have, is, is what he says. So, it, it, again, I think all this kind of goes into later when Danny's referring she's to She's like, well, as, it is. I do need, I, I have use for this. Like, well, well she's referring to them as bricks, is what I was gonna say. Like oh, they're yeah, yeah. they're just like. Well, here she says it is soldiers that I need. So she's like, I do need, I do need this. I yeah, have, exactly. I, do have, I could see a fit for them. They are nothing but soldiers, exactly. And he's like, well, you came to the right spot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So then we get the Danny Ar- Arston combo. Like, all right, like what? Do you, what's your thoughts here? And he's like, no, nah, this isn't it. Like, <laughs> yeah. there's never been slavery in the Seven Kingdoms. We're not about that. Uh, yeah, you're gonna show up and immediately piss people off. Exactly. Like, I mean, which makes perfect sense, right? Like, doesn't matter what side you're on. Fight the people that have like enslaved another person. Exactly. Like nothing. Like America is pretty divided, but if like we were attacked by like a foreign army, like especially like a slave army, we would rally against that thing real quick. You know what I <laughs> Probably, mean? Probably. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's what we need, right? I, exactly. I, and that's the point. Know. That's the point he's making here. Uh, no, we we don't need that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I realized that. <laughs> yeah. Um. And he also makes a point of like, once you show up there, like half of the kingdom still will support you. And I don't know if that's where's he getting that info, right? Sounds like, a we haven't like heard a single person <laughs> mention her name over there. Not a no single one, person. Yeah, no one. Really Robert even like, said, it. "Man, I, don't I can't wait for name. the Targaryens to come back." Maybe not her name, but he was he did have like people trying to he kill her. The little Targaryen girl, and that was like it. No, I, I agree with you guys. I agree with you guys. Although we, have, I guess the other side of that though is that we talked to pretty like important people that wouldn't be mentioning her, like that wouldn't still be on her side, like the because they have be on her side. side. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like so, I, I don't know. Maybe that's kind of part of it. The bias of our narrators, like maybe Lady Smallwood. You're saying like yeah. those types of like little small houses. Yeah, yeah. Would we don't be know what they're side. feeling. Yeah, yeah. I, we didn't even know they existed really until recently. <laughs> exactly. Like we just finally got like an idea of the the in between lands. The Lady of the Leaves. Yeah, cool. The Lady of the Leaves is definitely a big Targaryen supporter. <laughs> Game of Thrones, for the most part, is definitely the story of of the one percent. Yeah, the, it seems besides like Davos. Yeah. All right. Uh, so he also was like, "We don't need this. Like Illyrio can protect you till you get your dragons big enough." And he's gonna he'll go get the support of these houses. I guess that's kind of like we'll we'll actually get numbers like so who's going to be on your side once you're once you're ready to come over with the dragons yep interesting thing here uh when he's like oh people remember your family they remember Rhaegar. everybody loved him she's like yeah but they remember my dad too which right? again i don't not a single person mentions Rhaegar in a positive light either people i mean yeah again people just don't really talk about like the, the history stuff but my point here is what he what Arson says is yeah people remember your dad had like years of peace like <laughs> yeah. peace he doesn't say anything bad about about it, like her dad like her dad no no he does is, though is not so good. like he she immediately answered about Rhaegar and was like oh everybody loved him like he was a great dude and then it, you're, and she's definitely like, what about my dad and he's like for daddy. Mm. it's an awkward conversation <laughs> with daddy there was some there was some peaceful times <laughs> when your dad was around how long was he people king remember Nelson? that do you know how well, long he was king how long it would have been. I'm gonna say twenty ish years. So I mean maybe he Low 20s. maybe like uh sixteen years he wasn't great or burning everybody. Who knows? I don't know. I have no clue. I I'm not gonna assume. Alright, but so this is where like 
I guess the girl is overhearing Danny and Arson's conversation and she's relaying it back and she's like, and Kraz is like, well, tell her like, you better hurry up because other people are coming and they're buying them off. So like, if you want any, let's go. Yeah. He said, hurry up. I got, I got other buyers waiting. I, this is what they fucking do. Right. This is exactly car dealers <laughs> yeah. do this shit. Yeah. Like the last car I bought, they definitely, while I was sitting there, were like, well, we got a guy on the way. Yeah. He's coming. He's driving in from New Jersey and or he's something. He's paying full or, boat. Yeah. Tell so, him good luck then. Yeah. 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 So this is where he he gives her some more insults and Danny's like, listen, this is who I am. They get a little info on him, right? Like he's like, tell him they want all, eight, he wants all 8,000 of them. And then she's like, but he only wanted a hundred, dude. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, yeah. And like, but they don't realize, or <laughs> I, I don't know if she realizes that Danny knows that she knows. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah again, this is where saying. this is where Danny's actually learning a little bit of information. It's not just like her getting insulted. <laughs> like this is like the only thing really I think that she learns by knowing the language. Besides, like hearing insults that are, are meant for her, is the yeah that this guy didn't really want to buy all of them. He wanted, like, wanted to buy like a hundred of them, but they're trying to exactly what you said do the car dealership car dealer thing. Yeah, before before she leaves, he also like, hey, if you want to tour the city, like we'll show you around. Uh, you go check out. Oh, the I'll show you around. <laughs> like you need a you need a slave for your own. Yep. Do whatever you want, little girl. Like yeah, he suggests like looking at the pyramids, going on pleasure barges, like licking honey off each other's breath. <laughs> then he mentions going to the fighting pits. He's like, oh, there's a great show on tonight. There's gonna be a bear and three little boys. One boy's gonna be rolled in honey. The other one's gonna be rolled in blood uh, and blood, one's and the other one's rotted fish. 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 Yeah, that's and wild. We'll see who gets eaten first. Do they even it's... like? They better have uh, some weapons. If they don't have a weapon, I'm not. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds. It sounds like it's just a bet to see which one he eats first. Like you know, like cow shit bingo, right? Or chicken shit. Cow shit bingo is a great fundraiser. Yeah, I shouldn't be laughing at it, but it's yeah, it's so horrible. It's just kind of funny. Yeah. All right. So Danny's like, all right, I need to get the fuck out of here. Uh, and she gets a little bit of a, a look at asked for as she's as she's going around. Yep. It's made of all red brick. Like the whole place seems a little redundant. Can you imagine being in Minecraft and just making a whole? Well, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> it's like a Minecraft entire Minecraft town of the same thing. Can you imagine making a whole city in Minecraft with like just red brick. It'd be <laughs> yeah. crazy. Sounds like my town in Minecraft. It'd be kind of mm-hmm. cool looking, though. Is what I'm saying. If you had huge pyramids and shit, they get like lit up at night. Maybe if it, it would, wasn't it could red cool brick, and it was something like marble like if it was all marble like yeah i'm all about it yeah yeah <laughs> all right but yeah so they're going they see some weird stuff they see an elephant with like a lattice on its back they see a little boy in the gutter uh they see this like group of like what they which i she talks about to Dora later it seems like the actual like guard like the soldiers of this city like this i don't know if they're called the sons of the harpy they refer to him as the sons of the harpy later but also like kraz had kind of referred to himself as like the sons of the harpy so I don't know if that's just like a term that refers to like people who descend from old Gis. That was my Because they're the harpy. Thing. That's, that's kind of what I it take was, it. Yeah, it was just them. It's like yeah. a people who descend from old Gis thing. But yeah, these people, like these like guards are like, they have like cloaks with like brass on them. But like besides that, they're just like wearing like linen. And weird hair dudes. <laughs> like they're not really wearing ar- armor is what Danny points out later. Yeah, I don't think anything really happens here. It looks like this place is, is ripe for the taking. Yeah, I mean, again, if you're going to get attacked, you're not... Like the, the unsullied are going out. Like they're not- <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah, we all have right, an you army. Fake guards, stand- get inside. Like the <laughs> yeah, real, exactly. the real guys are here. <laughs> it's all that's all a show. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and Jeff's pointed out they have like crazy hair, so they all have their hair like super gelled up in like the shape of like hands or daggers or whatever fire. I don't know what, what else she said. Red black hair. I can't imagine. Like I was trying to imagine what red black meant, but I, I can't. I like died. Maybe like, like died. Maybe like Cruella Deville. One side's red. One. You side's think black. died? Yeah, maybe not half and half, but like streaks of red or something. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and we get there's some other slaves there that naked, like non unsullied slaves. I guess that she sees like there's a dog or a, a little boy feeding a dog at some point. Yeah, it's also weird. Like there's just nobody here. Like she says, like it's pretty like unpopulated. Like there's like it's nothing compared to Carth or Pentos or and like any of the other cities she's ever been to. But it's all slaves. <laughs> Yeah, all slaves. They have to stop at one point so that like slaves can go by. It's like a group of slaves being driven by like an overseer with like two people like just riding behind them on donkeys. Yeah. And at one point, Joe goes gonna like whip to be like, get out of the way, mother of dragons. And Danny's like, no, no whips here. This place has heard too much whipping. No, nah, we yeah. not. We can't do that here. No more whipping. No more whipping. <laughs> yeah. 
They're probably just like crack, 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 crack. Yeah, all over know, the like, place, yeah. And then we get a little bit more into Whitebeard and Whitebeard's thoughts on on what these people are, what she should do. Cool little rhyme. He he just like kind of mumbles to himself. A rhyme? Tell me how this rhymes. That's what he calls it. I know, but tell me how it rhymes. I was so mad. <laughs> it's more, yeah, like more of an alliteration. Bricks and blood built Astapor and bricks and blood her people. Yeah, it's not really a rhyme. Okay. It's like a little <laughs> saying. There might be more, another sentence or something that, that rhymes. But... Uh, and she's like, well, Danny's like, what's that mean? And he's like, it's just an old rhyme the Macer taught me. I never realized how true it was. But he's like, basically, the, the bricks are red from the blood of the slaves that make the bricks and build Astapor. Again, it's just like symbolisms. The city is just literally built by like built by slaves the blood of the slaves are in the walls of the city they're in everything not just the walls the pyramids the fountain like she says like the bricks are everything and like the blood yeah and then also like danny calls the men bricks later so it's like yeah bricks are her people the unsullied are these just like not even just people. a fucked up city yeah it's really what the saying essentially means yeah right? yeah exactly slaves like it's, have it's their... a hard hard place yeah it, it, well and a hundred percent reliant on slavery yeah, they're, I mean they're doing all they're slavery. doing all the work, they're doing all the fighting. They're probably even the point. Like if if the city wasn't built by slaves, the bricks wouldn't have blooded them. Like once you started bleeding, you'd stop and go take a break. You know what I mean? Put some gloves on, and the you're, city you're would be. You're telling like, me that you think these bricks are actually red with their blood? He says he learned this from a maester. I think that's. I think it's a. Uh, I don't know what's exaggeration. I don't know. I yeah. think it has non exaggeration. Every brick, every brick. Why are they bleeding so much? Like at, at least some of the bricks <laughs> that you put down, because they're not allowed to wear the, hold gloves. On. The first they cut them in the morning when they show up in the morning for work, Jeff. They have to cut their yeah. hands open. <laughs> they just need to leak their blood. As, the, their <laughs> blood the mortar. I could see them literally kill. Maybe they want the red bricks, and they're playing Minecraft. And the crafting table that's ingredient a, says you need slave blood, so they literally <laughs> killing the dye just to mix it in. <laughs> yeah, I no, can I see that. I think it's just similar. Like the the bricks are just red from whatever they're made out of. Just but symbolisms. Like, they're full of the blood of the the slaves. Yeah, like there's been rumors of how bad this place is. Yeah, it's like exactly. It's it's the blood of the slaves that had to build this place. The blood, sweat, and tears kind of idea. Maybe not literal blood, but. There's blood in there, big time. Anyway, no, I don't think it's that yeah. important. Yeah, I don't think so either. So, all right. So, Arsten's like, let's get cell swords instead of these slaves. Like, slaves aren't aren't a good deal. And she's like, yeah, slave slaveries aren't good deal. Like, this is, place is awful. Uh, I, I never want to. This reminds me of what Viserys did to me my whole childhood. Like, and, just sold me off. And and she says, like, I don't have anywhere else to go. Really, like, I can't. I, this is the only army available to me, right? Yeah, she's like, I need an army. I got the taste of being a beggar in Karth. I don't like it. I saw what it was like for my brother, and he did it in the free cities. I'm not going to go back to the free cities yeah. and do what he did. So instead, I'm going to steal all of Illyrio's stuff well, and well, use it in Astapor. Because that's what she's doing. She's stealing Illyrio's stuff. <laughs> like, instead of begging, she's stealing. Or he says, he says, it's better to come as a beggar than a slaver. And she says, no, I've done both. Like, yeah. You've been neither. Like, do you, do you know what this is like? Like, this is also where then he, we get that that interaction of like, the, I'm sorry I snapped at you. Yeah. Like, please, you're you're actually doing good here. Like, you're telling me the truth. You're telling me what, not just what I want to hear, right? Like, so this is cool, right? Yeah. But I mean, she is stealing all Illyrio stuff, though. I, she's not. I mean, Jorah kind of talked her into that too. But like, yeah, fuck, fuck Illyrio, right? <laughs> I mean, she, but I just think it's interesting. She's like, I will not be a beggar. But like, you're just literally taking this guy's stuff without. She'll be a thief, and then she'll have eight thousand <laughs> dudes. And what's yeah, Illyrio what gonna, are you gonna do? do about Illyrio? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah. What I would say here, though, is that she kind of notices like weird stuff about him. What do you mean? He's got a good face, great strength. Like he shouldn't. He looks way older than he should. Well, he's old. She says he has spotted hands at one point. I know, but what I'm saying is like she could not understand like he's kind of a weird that, weird old guy. I don't know, it's strange to me. It's strange. He has a good face and great strength. It seems weird that he's strong for how old he is, is why I think. Strong with the walking stick? Yeah, and that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like there's something weird about him where he's younger than he appears. He's younger than Danny thinks he is, is what you're saying? Or maybe he's got a disguise on, or maybe something else okay. is going on. He's there's fucking magic tree people. I, <laughs> I can I can make up whatever I want now. All right, no, you're good. I was, I, I'm not saying I wasn't trying to say you're right or wrong or anything like that. I just didn't quite understand the word. Maybe wording. he's using disguise self or something, some magic that has made him look older than he is, and this is why he's not. That's an interesting like, thought. 
too afraid. I like your gotcha. thought process. So the next thing that she goes into is she starts thinking of Jorah. Yep. And like weird stuff about Jorah. He's like, oh, he kissed me. Well, it starts because she's like, man, this guy's really kind of nice. And Jorah yeah. doesn't like him. Like, why doesn't Jorah like him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Yep. Oh, is he jealous? He's probably just jealous because he's been Jorah's been weird. And I've been me. I've been talking to him a little bit more. Like he's not the only like Westerosi council member now. Yeah, exactly. But then we get into the hot and heavy of it all. She thinks Jorah, that we. This was the last thing that happened, right? Jorah kissed her, and yeah, who's feeling some some boobies? <laughs> yeah, he's at least looking at him. Yeah, I don't forget. I think he like maybe rubbed it up as he kissed he her. Pinched one probably. Somebody's nipple always gets pinched. That always happens, I think. So, Whenever anybody snipples out. really got pinched today. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but you know what I'm saying. Eh? Yeah, so then she's like, I've been having these weird dreams. I don't really want to go into this part. I was reading this, and I was like, oh, come on, George. Like, It, it, it awoke the fire in her, that kiss. And it's not and it's not because of Jorah. <laughs> it's, you know. Yeah, like she's been having weird dreams. She's basically just been like. She's going through puberty. Sexual awakening. <laughs> yeah, again, I don't like talking about it. It's weird because she's a little girl. But again, yeah, the kiss spoke spark something in her but not necessarily about jorah she thinks about drogo sometimes but she has been just like imagining like a man there one time she started getting herself off couldn't do it and then a dragon screams well she was working hard she was trying but couldn't quite get there dragon screams. eerie sounds like she's been there before eerie gets it done real quick and then just goes to bed uh, eerie was probably listening to this like shut up i'm trying to sleep like <laughs> fuck it i'll do it <laughs> yeah you got something done right do it yourself is what Eerie's thinking. But yeah, so that's done. Uh, later on, at one point, Danny's like, Eerie, no no more of that. That was weird. That You're not a bed slave. Like, leave leave my privates to me. <laughs> she so, said, well, I'm not a slave at all. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. She's like, I, I like, brings me pleasure to please you or something like that, right? Yeah, it's real weird. Yeah. Real weird. So how's that come back? How does she snap out of the weird remembering of the wet dreams and stuff? Uh, She gets back to the ship. Oh, basically, she says she also mentions that, like, from after the, the kiss of Jorah, she just has not been alone with Jorah since. Yeah, it's just been awkward around him. She's made sure there's always somebody else there, a handmaiden or a blood rider or somebody else. Yeah, they're just never alone together anymore. And she, like, snaps. I think it's kind of cool. She, like, snaps back to it by, like, shaking her head. And, like, you get the tingle of her braid. Like, they never explicitly say, like, she's wearing uh, bells yeah. in her braid, like a Dothraki, but she is. She's because, conquered like, somebody, right? She burned the house of the undying. Well, uh, Drogon that did. deserves a bell. How did she get the bell? I forget. Like Dothraki just like wear bells in their wear. braid, and you, you don't. No, but she only braid. has one. Uh, I feel like it she? came from something. I thought it just said it tingled as her braid moved. I don't know if it said it had. Maybe it was from her wedding day. I don't. I don't know the origin. But and we the get back bell to this. in her braid chime softly. I okay. Don't know. Yeah, I don't sound know. like one. We get back to the ship. Nelson's favorite character is eating a, a big dog leg. Yeah, my boy. I knew he was going to mention that. Strong bell loss. Uh, and we get back to Jor, and he's like, "Hey." The slavers came by and took inventory of basically everything we have to know what we can pay them. How? Yep. What, tell me what happened. How? How did it go? How many men do they have? Yeah, none. They have no men. They're all eunuchs, bricks, brick eunuchs, like the rest of the city. What am I supposed to do with eight hundred, eight thousand brick eunuchs with dead eyes who kill babies and strangle puppies? Go win your throne. They don't even back. have names. Don't call them men. Yeah. And like to Jorah's point, like <laughs> yeah, he's like, but they're excellent. <laughs> and he's like, they've been trained. She's like, don't tell me shit about the train. I've heard all I need to hear about that. Yeah. Get out of my face. And I, I think you're right, Jeff. I think, I think she's taking this out on Jorah. Like, yeah, a lot of this is just like he suggested come here, and it's way Fuck worse Jorah than too, she though, thought. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not a to Jorah the point. Stand I think we right we now. might have jumped over it. Like at one point, Whitebeard does say like. He is a slaver. Like she's like Jorah said, we should yeah. come here. We did she's jump like, over that. He's yeah. a slaver. We did for sure. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't do it on purpose. I definitely wanted to mention that. You're right. He, that's a really good point. Yeah. So he's he has no problem with this, and that that's another reason why she brought Whitebeard. Like you really on, have two options right now. If you don't have followers, like if you don't have like actual houses that are going to back you, you can either buy cell swords or buy this unsullied army. And we know enough about cell swords that. If shit hits the fan, <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. they're out, right? So yeah, these guys don't seem like they'll be out. Like, say you have eight thousand cell swords or eight thousand unsullied. I'm gonna take the unsullied. They're gonna do whatever it takes, you know. And I, and I know that's awful, but in terms of production, if you're just yeah. trying to win, a, if you're <laughs> yeah, just trying to win a war, sure. like George here, I'm trying to win you your throne. We can buy these eight thousand workers. And again, the slave thing is what what throws it all off. Yeah, and, exactly. And just the training. It's all awful, but. Uh, if Jorah doesn't care about the means of getting the throne, the Unsullied yeah. are the better option. 
Yeah. She even says though, like there, there's eight thousand brick Unix for sale, and I, and I, you've now made me have to buy them because they really are the best option. Yeah, exactly. She's yeah. like, you're a hundred percent right. These are the best option. I fucking hate everything about this. You've made me an awful person because now I have to do this. I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. And so. so that's that's part of why she's so mad at him, right? Like yep. for sure, she has a reason to yeah. be mad at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's kind of giving in to the slavers at this. Like the yeah. slavers win because she she knows this is what she yep. needs, and it's, yeah. so she goes she's downstairs. Stuck. And the dragons were hasty in her absence, uh, kind of going off and crazy. Eerie sees that she's sad. It's like, hey, yeah, you want me to help that? I can, I can fix that. <laughs> this is where they have that conversation about <laughs> like, no, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. The other thing, real quick, before we go off, Jora, yeah, uh, you guys said he slapped her. She slapped him, right? Oh, and I she did slapped it. him. Yeah. I think I think we like yeah. mentioned it in passing, but like, yeah, she, she slaps him. Like everyone's looking on. The other thing that's funny is I think she keep. It, there's a few times here where she's like, "He's no true knight because he kissed me without my he, permission." He said it out loud. Well, the kiss part she didn't say out loud, but she said, "If you were my true knight, you would never have brought me to this vile sty." Yeah. When I hear true knight, I'm just like Sansa, grow up. It's just kind of yeah, like what I, yeah. <laughs> what I think anytime I hear true knight. Or even um, Brienne. Why Brienne? Because she's like believes in true knights, and that's like her whole thing with Jamie. That's like what she's trying to be. Yeah, and like Jamie's not. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, so then you're right. We get into eerie. Dragons are going crazy. I think it's also funny. Like, it's great. Like, Danny's had a horrible day. She like one of the worst days probably in like the last while. She comes home. Drogon starts barking, howling. Viserion comes over, jumps on her shoulder. He's like, she's like, no, you're too big. And then she just like falls out but and she's she giggling. Loves it. She's literally giggling. It's just like when you get home from a bad day, bad day's work, and your dog just like there to cheer you up. You know what I mean? Like for a yeah, few for dog. a few minutes, you're just like ah. You're having a great day. They don't know that they don't know that she had an awful day. You know, exactly. The dog just, just want to be <laughs> the dog dragon. I think that's the point. Like that's what's going on there. I think it's really cool. So, yeah, moving but, on. Eerie's there. He's like, cool, Eerie, good job. Sorry you got bit. Out of here. Yeah. She <laughs> don't touch my shit no more. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then she later on that night she returns to the deck uh, and she does look out over the pyramid. She's like, wow, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. From here, it looks almost beautiful, she thought. The stars were coming out above and the silk lanterns below, just as Krasna's translator had promised. The brick pyramids were all glimmery with light, but it is dark below, in the streets and plaza and fighting pits, and it's darkest of all in the barracks, where some little boy is feeding scraps to the puppy they gave him when they took away his manhood. Yep. So again, I think it's just like a cool contrast of beauty with what now she knows what's actually yeah. going on in the city. And then, yeah, here, Jorah comes up. And she's like, yeah, can I speak freely? And she's like, I'm not going to turn or else I'm going to have to slap him. So Or cry. She says, or kiss She him. thinks that. She thinks that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, lot, a lot of emotions going on in her right yeah, now. This whole thing's weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. But she's basically like, look, I'm, I'm sad about the 8,000 babies, the 8,000 dogs, like all this horror that's happened to get to this means of having Unsullied. Like, this is awful. To your point, when he says, can I speak frankly? What he says is, hey, look, you got to win it like Aegon won it. You got to win it. With fire and yeah. blood, with with dragons and steel, and she's like, "Yeah, blood and fire. That's my house words." And then to your point, but she's like, "Yeah, offering eight thousand means like like the blood is of my enemies, not of innocence. Eight thousand on Sully's means that I'm like supporting the murder of eight thousand babies and eight thousand yeah. puppies." I, I think this is pretty uh, like George's point back to her is pretty interesting. Then about what happened after the sack of King's Landing. <laughs> that kind of is what is happening over right. Yeah. Currently with like Gregor at least yeah. in that group and the mummers are kind of fucked up it seems like. And What's weird though is like so he says yeah they wouldn't do anything bad unless you command it. That was like commanded right so like it's like imagine Tywin had commanded Well a, Gregor, Gregor command or Gregor was commanded that by, by Tywin, Tywin right? like Lily go just be horrible throughout the yeah. land so that they that the river like, they have to we do know, something about We know it. that the brave companions bloody mummers would probably be doing that shit anyway. My point, my my point is like if Tywin had control of eight thousand Unsullied, he would have told them to do the same thing he told the Mountain to do, like go burn and like kill. Sure, but the, and, the difference is like, <laughs> but the difference probably, is that yeah. at the sack of the King's Landing, like they did that without, from what we know, like that was an order. Yeah, just because especially if to. it was like Ned was the guy that was there. Yeah, Ned was the first guy in yeah, the, in the building, that, right? Sure. So now it's like Northmen and and whatnot. He yeah. wouldn't. He wouldn't have ordered that. So people acted without those orders, and you know the 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 warriors, their blood gets boiled. So then they need to, yeah, rape people and and kill more people. You know, and and 
like, hey, it happened. It's not just these slavers. Like, it's happening yeah. elsewhere. Yeah, and I think it's cool summed up here. Like, brick they may be, as you say, but if you buy them henceforth, the only dogs they'll kill are those you want dead. And you do have some dogs you want dead, as I recall, because Danny keeps thinking the usurper's dogs, thinking Tywin and Ned, which is funny because, like, we know those two don't really like, yeah. get along. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're not in cahoots. And Ned's, <laughs> and Ned's dead. dead and, but yeah, like those are the, that's who's like she's thinking of with those two normally. And this this is where she talks about like why is this not why is Astapor not sacked? And she points out like there's cracks in the walls. This looks yeah. bad. They have bad people protecting. There's nobody even in that guard tower right there. And he's like, ah, oh, you have a dragon's eyes. And she's like, don't give me fucking compliments. Give me answers. And kind of like what we said, like this is a main customer. And and you'd have to fight the unsullied too. You'd have to fight the unsullied, which. I don't know, you know, the whole force would be at them. We don't know how many are like half trained or like just not, maybe not are in their spike yet, but it's going to be more than 8,000. But I mean, the Dothraki do have hordes of what, 100,000? That could also just be the 8,000 that are for sale, too. Like, that's they could what, have yeah, a, a like standing I don't guard, know what, right? Yeah. Like, you can't buy this 6,000 we have in the back. Yeah, yeah maybe so they're anyway. keeping some for, to, for their own protection. Like how much do you think that they're keeping for their own protection? Cause like we said, you gotta keep more than you're going to sell somebody. Right. Cause you gotta be sure you're going to win that fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they can't yeah. turn around and just, You'd hope you. at least, um, but yeah, but to, the other to thing that point is of that, like how many would you need to stop a hundred thousand Dothraki? I mean, the story that Jorah told it was 3000 beat a hundred thousand Dothraki. Yeah. 3000 well, on Sully, which that's a crazy number. But then the college point, which I think is crazy. Like if you sell 8,000, like, <laughs> yeah, you have a, that well, equals two hundred thousand Dothraki. Pretty. Much. That's a spoiler of my my prior mentioned uh, hypothesis, though. It's like I think that is what's about to happen there. It feels like uh, Danny is going to get these unsullied and then turn them on the city. Um, we can talk about that later if you want. But. Yeah, yeah let's get to the end. Let's keep keep that on the tip of <laughs> yep. time. And he gives me the Dothraki thing. Um, my next thing is like the man who fought for Rhaegar. I don't, I don't know how that's tied into the Dothraki. Side so she them. basically, she, he says like, yeah, like they're the biggest customer. And also they just do the same thing that, the, that we saw the free cities do. Like when the Dothraki show up, they just like pay them, throw a big party, give them a bunch of food, take all their slaves off their hands and give them whatever they want. And then they fuck off and don't bother yeah. us. So, and Danny's like, I wish I could do that. I wish I could just go pay Joffrey. And he would just be like, fuck, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> Cheaper than fighting is. Yep. Yeah. She doesn't say anything for a while. And he like goes to touch her. And she shrugs him off, and she's like, my brother, Viserys, would have bought as many <laughs> Unsullied as he could. But you once told me I was more like Rhaegar than I was than I was like Viserys. And he's like, I remember Daenerys. And she's like, your grace. Your grace. <laughs> so he's, she's keeping Spanish him in line woman. here. Yeah. It's just, yeah, she's trying to push him back a little. A little rebuttal. Yeah. And she says that Rhaegar led free men into battle. That And uh, Whitebeard told her that he even knighted his own squires and like knighted other men, too, that weren't squires. And Jorah's like, yeah, there was no greater honor than to be knighted by the Prince of Dragonstone. Tell me then, when he touched a man on the shoulder with his sword, what did he say? Go forth and kill the weak, or go forth and defend them? At the Trident, those brave men Viserys spoke of who died beneath our dragon banners. Did they give their lives because they believed in Rhaegar's cause, or because they had been bought and paid for? And he turned to Mormont, crossed her arms, and waited for an answer. My queen. The big man said slowly. All you say is true, but Rhaegar lost on the trident. He lost the battle. He lost the war. He lost the kingdom. And he lost his life. His blood swirled downriver with the rubies from his breastplate, and Robert the Usurper rode over his corpse to steal the Iron Throne. Rhaegar fought valiantly. Rhaegar fought nobly. Rhaegar fought honorably. And Rhaegar died. And Rhaegar died. So he, he's like, sometimes you got to do, you got to do bad stuff to get there. Yep. Yeah. The right thing. And I mean, and this is, this is the same, like if they knew about Ned, right? Like if they knew Ned's side of things, like exactly. Ned tried to do everything by the book, Ned's dead. Exactly. Yeah. It's pretty much same story. Like I said earlier, I think, I think he's going to, she's going to go buy him. And then at the very least, she's going to get them for free. Like she's going to get all her stuff back. Um, Illyria's stuff. Strong arm them somehow. That's, that's where I'm at. I think this is gonna be her like her first conquest. Like I, she's got to start kind of doing some of this stuff soon, right? Like she can't can't be a beggar forever. She's not gonna grow if she's not doing bad shit. Yeah. So I think I think this is gonna be the the start of her arc. I think but, I think it's like important. Danny like just wants her shit kind of like like she knows she has to go to war, right? Like there's a cost of doing business. Like you're gonna however way so, you're gonna have ar- an army, you're going to war. You're, someone's gonna die. 
Like, Here's where I'm so, at, though. Like, I guess in terms of her dress, like she's so against these slavers and like the whole concept of all this and that her, she's supporting it. I feel like she's going to feel like she has to like give back to the city, give back to the slaves somehow. And that's kind of, I guess, what I mean by her conquest. Maybe she's not going to take over and rule the city with an iron fist, but, you know, like she's going to like change the way things are. Yeah, what I was just going to say is it makes sense. Like, you can see why Danny's like so pissed off, especially if you just go back and look at, like, again, past chapters, like the one I mentioned earlier where they're sacking that city, like that, like, yeah. Lazarine town. She's literally trying to go around and, like, save people, right? Yeah. Like, she's Stopping like, the rapes and, yeah. Like, we know she's against slavery, which, again, like, was, is obvious throughout the chapter, but, like, again, she has, like, the history of, like, not being a huge, <laughs> a huge fan of slavery. But at the end of the day, there, she's like, ah, it is the Dothraki way. They're doing what they got to do. And it, she, you know what I mean? She's like, I, but she, I feel like she's always been kind of trying to curve that away. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying she was ever for it, but yeah. Yeah. I think even though she, you're saying that's the death recce way they're doing what they got to do. I think she's saying, but I don't have to do that. That yeah. doesn't have to be my way. Absolutely. Gotcha. I can make my own way. And, and I think, like I said, this yeah. is kind of the beginning of that gotcha. or the beginning of her putting that emotion to the point where like she stopped Cal's number one, uh, Drogo's number one guys. And that kind of became his downfall. That was the fight that, he took a wound and died from like, yeah. 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 She killed him essentially. Uh, all right. Interesting. All right. Interesting thoughts by Kyle. You don't have to ask me what I think. Now we get to gossip about you for the next uh, yeah. half yeah. hour. Good. Half uh, hour. Oh, fuck. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we talked for like 45 minutes on our last one about, yeah, but, <laughs> but half of it was about star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing? And we did that again today. You got to talk about star Wars again today. Yes. And we mentioned and or, and yeah, yeah you're the right. Whole thing. All right, well, I don't know if we're still recording, but bye, Kyle. <laughs> bye, Kyle. All right, later, nerds. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Bye, Kyle. See you on the next one. Bye, Kyle. Thanks for hanging out. Now on to the spoiler section for Danny 2. Jeff, what we got? Dun, dun, dun. Well, let's start with just Kyle... Yeah. I thought Kyle had maybe his best non-spoiler section ever. And let's be... He's been good just recently. remind our listeners, Kyle has never read this and he's never seen it. Yeah. And he was pretty good. Yeah. First off, he was sniffing around Arston. Something's up with this cat. Sniffing around. I thought it was a really interesting idea that he's thinking disguise. And it, it kind of brings me to one of my... One of my... Not really spoilers, but just one of my points... He's not in disguise. He's an old man, but he's maybe the fittest old man ever. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. There's a section. The last line mentions that not the last line. Last paragraph mentions that Rhaegar died and his rubies floated down the River. deal. So we just know like there's some ruby glamour type shit. Yeah. So like the fact that Kyle's kind of thinking along that line, like at some <laughs> yeah, point, somebody's going to get glamoured and he's going to be like, holy shit, that's actually a thing, which I think is cool. And then, uh, yeah, no, he's on Arston. He's on kind of Danny and her end goal of like she's gonna get the Unsullied, but then kind of flip it, flip the script, and like free free them, and then kill this yeah. people. And I think they kind of allude to it here. He was thinking that there was like a reserve Unsullied force that they keep just for them. They don't, and that's kind of the whole point here. Where Jorah's like, yeah, the reason no one can attack them is because a the Unsullied are just friends with them. They like slavery, and two, anyone who attacks them has to deal with the Unsullied. But to Kyle, like if Kyle would have like thought about that a second more and, and didn't think there was a reserve then yeah danny buys the unsullied she doesn't like slavery so she doesn't want to just let them off with it and now they don't have anyone to protect them because she has the unsullied which is exactly yeah. what happens it does it go pretty much like the like the show like she gets them and then she gives them drogon and then burns burns the guy or kills they kill the masters burn him and then yeah we end up in this long ass time period we someone mentioned it like kyle doesn't really care about this because it's so far moved. We're here for forever. Like we're never leaving. Well, we're it. We're, we're going at, to another place. Yeah. We're going to Marine. We're in and Marine shit like for that, a but, while. Marines where we hang up for a while. We're in we're in forever. Yeah, you're right. We're we're in Slavers Bay for the rest of the books for Danny. And I don't again. I don't think Danny's in feast. So saying the rest of the books is really just the rest of Storm and Dance. But yeah. So next, I think next chapter she basically gets all the unsullied. Chapter after that she'll go to Young Guy, and I think the last chapter, one of the last chapters she'll go to Marine. In this book, and then I think she's yeah. just hanging out in Marine pretty much the whole fifth book. So I think that's the well, the big spoilers. We kind of know how this is going. She's going to take the Unsullied, free them, yep. and they all want to be a part of her army. Then, which is kind of like she becomes the, her new title, the the 
what's it called? Mother Misa. Uh, what yeah. They? Yeah. Well, which is the other thing, like she free can free them, like buy them and then free them. And then they're not slaves anymore. Then bang, your slave problem is fixed, which is what she does. Yeah. And they still follow her. Um, what, what do they call her though? Like mother of dragons, the uh, breaker of chains, breaker of chains. Yeah. So that's cool. Uh, so yeah, the one note I had was Rhaegar and the rubies. Like, I don't know. You've mentioned before, like, is Rhaegar still alive at, on the wall or doing Mance. some kind of weird shit? It's Mance Rhaegar. Yeah. I mean, I don't really believe any of those stuff. Uh, I, I, I'm in the camp that if you, if you like gun to my head, Rhaegar's dead. But again, I, I think those are interesting theories to talk about. But I mean, I, I think Rhaegar's dead too, because like they burned rattle shirt because of like they needed to burn him right like because at well they burn mance everyone thinks quote, they burn mance but yeah it was actually rattle shirt but like if they didn't burn him like would the glamour way off and you'd be like like if you just like slit his throat would oh yeah the glamour way off and be like holy yeah, shit that's done. rattle shirt so <laughs> yeah, yeah if it was like Rhaegar died i think we can confirm that he died in the river like if yeah. the rubies even fell off his chest plate the you would think the glamour would wear off and then you'd be like that's not Rhaegar. what the fuck exactly it was Rhaegar. he's dead yeah I'm in the same camp again. I, I it's not like I'm going to c- completely discount any of those theories, especially because you know I just like talking about random nonsense theories. But yeah, I'm in, definitely in the camp that he's dead. Going back a second, as far as like the whole like Danny's going to turn the slaves, the unsullied on Astapor. I think there's like a few like lines throughout the chapter that kind of like hint to that. Like the one where she's like asking Krasny's like, "Hey, what if someone offered them freedom? Would they like betray yeah. them for it?" And that's not again. It's not exactly what happens. But she like kind of does get them free, like get them to betray him, and it's then a little free bit different. Them. Yeah, it's a little bit different because she's the one with the thing, right? Yeah, it's not a betrayal because they belong to her at that point. She's ordering them to be freed, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, pretty you much. don't have the choice. Yeah, uh, but again, that line just like kind of made me think, like, oh, I know what you're actually going to do. Like, it's going to involve kind of yeah. betrayal <laughs> and freedom at the same time. And then the yeah. other one where she's like, where he's like, oh, we only sell them in the hundred or thousand, and she's like, yeah. I know if I take any, I'm taking more than a hundred. That line also made me think like, yeah, because you're not taking them by like, uh, oh, here's a fair trade. You're taking them by, here's a yeah. dragon. I mean, here. I just think to the point of like, she just needs a lot too. Like, I don't, she, you're wasting your time if you're only taking a hundred. Sure. Like, uh, what, when, this can't be, that can't, this can't be that slow of a build. Like you want to, <laughs> we want to catch over there sooner or later, which we know it is a slow build. She's bouncing around slaver's bay so the thing that he mentions here is that there was another buyer a coarsehair king who was gonna buy we hear 100 right we he says yeah. all of them but 100 there's a lot of theories that this is euron does he have coarse hair i don't corsair is like pi- means like pirate like dreadlocky no it just me it just means like it doesn't mean it ha- doesn't have anything to do with their hair corsair i don't think that's true at all what people have coarse hair you can it's not even spelled like hair. It's spelled. <laughs> Where was that? C O R. Core. S A I R. A privateer or pirate. Wait, let me let me just read it. Oh, it is corsair. I thought it was coarse coarse hair. <laughs> yeah, definition a pirate. Okay, I thought you meant maybe it's Salador San then. I mean, it could be Salador San, but he should be with over with uh, far away. Whatever. From... Yeah, I don't. know. Maybe it's. But people think this is Euron. Okay. All right, I, 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 we know he doesn't get them, so I mean, I guess it's moot point, but yeah, not much to talk about it here, but yeah, uh, I think there's a few other mentions of this Corsair King and like coming up dandy chapters, like oh, he attacked a bunch of galleys off the coast, and blah 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 blah. And I think people think it's it's Euron, so just mention it now so we can keep an eye on it later. Um, Does it he also con- kind of makes he sense, considers that, like, himself a king. Well, he becomes, prince, he kind of does become king, king, king of the Iron Island, yeah. Also, the Unsullied kind of seem like people he would like, right? We know that he cuts the tongues off of his like crew because they don't, so they can't say anything. Yeah, they're kind of. His he says here the Unsullied people. are like already like zombies, pretty much. Last thing I have is the Sons of the Harpy. They like call themselves the Sons of the Harpy. We know that that is like kind of the group that Danny ends up like having yeah, trouble with him. Mad Marine. beef over. Yeah. So, so th- like it, I, I was a little confused. It was like. Kraz even like does he consider himself a son of the harpy? Yeah, he calls himself a son of the harpy at one point. Yeah, so really, just any master in Astapor is a son of the harpy. Yeah, I think it's kind of like the people who aren't slaves, like people who come from yeah. the descent of old Gist, who are the one percenters. Yeah, they're the sons of the harpy. 
exactly. Yeah. And when we and when we get to the like those Danny chapters, then we'll have to deal with like the Green Grace and who's in charge of like running Marine, yeah. and those are like who's actually funding the Sons of the Harpy. It's kind of different than the than the show, but yeah, we'll get to that there. Again, nothing yeah. super talk talk about here. Just wanted to mention if some of that stuff. Do you think if Danny knew that all the cities would kind of like revolt against her, like she would change her course of action, like just take the unsullied and run type of thing? But that's probably what she should do, right? After she fucks up Astapor, just GTFO, go back to Westeros instead of marching to Young Guy and Marine. You're saying because she yeah. basically says like, "No, I'm ending slavery. I need to save. I need to save them all." Yeah, exactly. Which like, unless you kill Cut your them losses, all, go to Westeros, come back and save them all later. Unless you kill them all, it's gonna come back, right? Well, I mean, that's what happens. By the time she's like kind of sitting well in Marine, she's, at the, next, young she's guy, at the next town. Yeah, they've already they've revolted and are taken back by the slavers. She basically figures out it's hard to rule. And I think that's kind of what she's going to do is just say, fuck it all and leave pretty early. I, I, I do think it's interesting that she gets those lessons though before she comes over, though. So the thing that my thought is like she has two options, right? And I think the one thing she might do in the books I'm saying is like she's either going to like realize like shit ruling is hard. Yeah, I don't want it anymore. I don't want to deal with this. I will figure it out in Westeros. Or yeah, where there's already not slavery. Yeah. Or what I could see her doing is like, crap, I can't like I tried to fix this. I tried to put it in a good establishment. It didn't work. The only way to stop slavery from existing here is to burn it all. And I could see her doing that. Like wow. maybe not just like showing up and burning civilians, but like issuing a decree like, hey, anyone who's still in the city after this date. You're done you're, <laughs> because the city is not going to be there type thing. Like, how is, would she, how do you think she would do it? I don't even know how she would do that, but that's kind of where I could see her going. And again, that kind of like leans toward mad queen, right? Where, oh, there's some yeah. like homeless people or like injured people who couldn't make it out of the city. Imagine and if Jan she like, does Fuck do it. that. Yeah. Imagine if she does do that. Word gets back to Westeros. Well, because I don't know what else she's going to do, right? Because let's think about Danny's long term. She say she, she does whatever with the Dothraki. She kills them all, whatever, conquers them all. Com- she comes back to Marine. She has a huge problem on her hands. There's a war going on, right? The Marine's Lily in war. Barrison's riding out to war in the Winds of Winter chapter. Tyrion's on the other side of the war. Victorion Greyjoy is coming, showing up with his ships. Danny shows up. Asapor and Yunkai have both been taken back by the slavers. Like, what is she doing? Is she saying, okay, Tyrion, okay, Victarion, like, hang on. We need to figure out the all the politics in Slavers Bay. Like, maybe, like, her character, maybe, but like, there's no time for that. Like, that's not what's happening at Wins a Winner. Yeah. We're cutting our losses here, some one way or the other. Whether it's she just says, fuck it all, I don't care, and just leaves. I don't, but that that makes less sense to me than her saying, you know what? We're yeah. going to burn it all so it never happens again. So she is – she's right now she's in the field with the Dothraki, right? Yeah. <laughs> she's not even near the war that's going on out in front of Marine. Correct. Uh, she hasn't know. met Tyrion yet. I think I think she's just going to fly Drogon back, like burn half of the army that's attacking her, and then like let's get the fuck out of here. Say, even say that the war in Marine is just done. Like you still have the problem of you don't – control Astapor and Yunkai again and if your whole point here is we're going to stop slavery in Slaver's Bay yeah then like okay cool we take we've won the marine war what is the mm. end of Winds of Winter going to be her going back to Yunkai and Astapor like that's not where the no. story's going so it's not so even that's my like, point is like yeah. there's one of two options we cut our losses at some point and just say fuck it or there's like some like final solution <laughs> which is like I don't so like the point you I don't like saying that, like final solution but like like that's what yeah. it would be in her in Danny's mind. Like this is it. The ha- yeah. you're we're stopping slavery forever. Kind of do like Tywin style, burn it down. I mean, this is what Blood Raven burn did. Burn it down to rebuild it. What? Uh, in the third Duncan Egg book, where are they at? They're at um, Dairy, White Walls. Okay. And afterwards, because there's the rebellion happening, John the Fiddler reveals himself as Damon Blackfire the third, I think, and is like gonna try and retake the the throne. Like that's what the whole dunk the third Duncan Egg book is, and then mm-hmm. setting up that rebellion. I think at the end of that, Blood Raven commands that the castle's torn down and they sow the field with salt, right? Which is what, what you do when you totally want nothing there anymore. You, like, mix salt into the ground so that nothing can grow there for a hundred years. That's interesting. So that's what Blood Raven does to, to this place where they had this rebellion. And just, like, nothing will be here for a while and they'll forget that anything ever happened. This will not be... Because he says he doesn't want it to be like another red grass field. Because like where the first rebellion ended, there was this huge battle at the red grass field, and now people still go and put memorials there. 
And he's like, this uh, will not be another red grass field. Nothing will be here. Yeah. So, and I can see Danny kind of taking the same thing. It's like, you know what? I can't win it. Then it's just gone. It's going to be a parking lot. <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> it's interesting to think about. Again, I don't know, but again, I it just like if you think like, that's kind of like on a meta level, like we're not Danny doesn't have enough time to fuck around in Slaver's Bay for a whole nother book and she doesn't have enough time to get it all figured out really quick. So, yeah, gotta get burned to so the point of what you're saying last time about like George and, and him kind of sitting on when's a winner to make it perfect. Like maybe he's at a cross like he doesn't know what to do. Like, can you can you think like he just has no clue? Well, what this to do. already happened one time. He he said this was the, he had a problem with Danny and Marine during book five. That's why Dance of Dragons took so long. He said, I'm struggling with Danny and Marine. And he called it the mirror and he's not. I'm pretty sure before Dance with Dragons was released, he told fans who were like, why is dance taking so long? He was like, I'm struggling with a bunch of Danny chapters. I'm calling it the mirror and he's not because I'm I got myself all tied up. And basically his problem was Danny's leaves Marine. But we need POVs in Marine. And he was trying to get Tyrion to show up a little bit early or Victarion to show up a little bit early so that we'd have a POV in Marine when Danny left. Yeah. And he wrote that. He wrote Tyrion getting there before Danny left. And he didn't like it. And he wrote Victarion getting there before Danny left. And didn't like it. And the way he and he wrote like Quentin something with Quentin where like, you know what I mean? But yeah. what he decided on was Barristan gets POV chapters. That's what like solved the mirror knees not for him. Like that he I can have a POV in Marine without Danny being there. It's just gonna be Barristan. Yeah. Um, but again, like unless George just does this thing, we're like, okay, you know what? We're going to, we're going to spend a whole book on Slaver's Bay. She's going to go back and capture our support. And I could see it, but I, I doubt oh, well, it. Th- if that's the case, then the only thing that like, if she either dies or wins the throne, that's it. Like we're not seeing post Danny King, uh, queen. You know what I mean? We're, so here's the, and again, I wish I could speak more on this, but one thing that really excites me about like if we do get an ending to the series is one thing that George has talked on a lot that he really likes is the ending to Lord of the Rings. And I've never actually oh, are you gonna spoil it for no, me? No, no, I've never even read I've never even read the end of Lord of the Rings. I've seen the end of the movies, and they don't they don't do what he's talking about in the movies. At the yeah. end of the Lord of the Rings, after pretty much the climax and everything's settled, there's like I I I've, again I haven't read it, so I don't understand, but it basically to my understanding, there's like a like a section that kind of takes place a few years later, and it just kind of like wraps up everything and kind of shows like where the world ended up after the story was over, right? So it's not like, hey, the end of the story. I gotcha. It's like the last Harry Potter, like you get eleven years later, and his son is going off to Hogwarts, type of thing. Exactly. I, again, I haven't read the last Harry Potter, but it would be a it'd be a similar thing where you find out that yes, all is still well and good in the world. X years later, it's or like, dun dun dun, something bad. Exactly, to exactly. So, and and George has said that he re- like his favorite chapter in Lord of the Rings is that last chapter, and he really likes how it's wrapped up. And again, that's one of the main reasons why I want to finish reading Lord of the Rings is so I can understand exactly what kind of vibe that chapter gives off, because then I'll know yeah, hopefully what to expect. Sense. But yeah, so I think that uh, to your point, like if if she is on the throne, I think we will see that like oh, it turned into a really bad dictatorship or. Oh, it turned into a utopia. Like I think we'll get that. What happens five years later, or if she dies and Bran ends up either either way, I think we'll yeah. get we'll get that. So, all right. Uh, I don't really. Let me just peer through my notes really quick. That's all I have. Uh, is it is the the girl? Tell us her name. M- Missande. Yeah, Missande. Uh, that was one of the ones that I thought I was going to slip in again. Not really a spoiler. If one of us would have said Missande, it's not like it's a huge spoiler. But they don't actually mention it anywhere in this. I think chapter. it is a spoiler because then that shows that we're learning more about her, which yeah, means that exactly. she's with Danny type of thing. It's like if you would have said Grey Worm. Yes. Yeah. It said you said the important Unsullied, which is kind of still a little hint that we're going to learn a little bit more about them. But I will. I meant. She, I guess yes. Yeah, <laughs> but no. Yeah. I think. We but we guess. also know that she's. She's buying them. Like well, she's no, leaving I, with them. I actually them, was so. going to text you before the, the podcast and be like, "Hey, I know it's not a spoiler, really, but don't mention the word Masande." And again, I struggled with it the whole time. Every single time I go to say arson, I'm afraid I'm going to say Barrison, and I catch yeah. myself and try and say Whitebeard instead, just because it's further away from Barrison. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we. I feel like we're doing pretty good with both those things. But yeah. Short spoiler section. Uh, we had a long spoiler, non-spoiler. So wait, I want to talk one little thing quick about yeah. Danny the kiss kind of wakening something in her. Okay. Do you like it also awakened her like sexual being, right? Yeah. Yeah. She's Is there like, a chance that, that, that like awoke something like actually, like if her womb was like dead, no, or, you know, not, she couldn't fruitful, have kids. Yeah. 
like bam like now like now maybe she back. gave up but like man now she's back type of thing like it's like a know. mental thing because like like very says power resides where you think it resides if she thought she wasn't in, like infertile maybe she was but now that like something clicked on maybe she can have yeah. babies again uh it just seems like it was a trigger uh it's a trigger for dario to slip into her bed so it's a trigger for yeah dario fills right, this role of man she's looking for um so yeah i think that's what this is kind of leading up to all right. Also, it's a weird part where she does like have this dream of this man next to her who's younger than Jora and more calmly. Again, there's not really like a description of that man, but again, seeing kind of where the show goes and just like what people think anyway, I'm just like wondering like, oh, I wonder if Danny has this dream later and it's like, oh, the face slowly became less of a shadow. It had gray yeah. eyes and black hair and we're like, oh, is this John, you know what I mean? Is this John type That's thing? That's interesting. Um, again, there's not enough like descri- there's no description except for younger than Jorah and calmly. So I don't think that's enough to say, oh, she's dreaming of John. But I, I would I would wonder if it's going that way. So, but yeah, that's all I got. All right, let's get out of here. See you. All right, we'll see you guys on the next one for Brand Two. Like, subscribe. Right. Thanks for listening. Bye bye.